Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We start with the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. Dear students of practice in interpreting, in today's lesson, we will talk about interpreting in general, kind of introduction to interpreting. What is required and how it is done, what are its types. First of all, interpreting means basically translating, but not in writing, translating verbally, orally. That means a translator listens to the speech, understands it and conveys it orally, verbally to the audience. Now, depending on the situation, it could take different forms. The two most known forms or formats are consecutive interpreting, which we call in Arabic Tarjam al Fawriya al Mutaqibah al al Mutataliya. And the second type is simultaneous interpreting, which we call At-Tarjam al fawriya Al-Mutazamina. Now, in the classroom situation, normally what we do is we go through a kind of uh, consecutive interpreting because students are not trained, experienced and geared up for the simultaneous interpreting. Now, as I said, depending on upon the situation, we may have some other subtypes of interpreting also. For example, one may have something called sight interpreting, S-I-G-H-T, sight interpreting. Or a quote interpreting. Now, le let's go one by one. Consecutive interpreting is wherein the translator listens to the speaker and based on some kind of understanding between the two or the organizers, the speaker speaks for a while and then stops. It could be a few sentences, it could be a few ideas, it could be time bound, for example, he may speak or she may speak for a minute or so, more or less. And while the speaker is speaking, Interpreter focuses on analyzing it in his mind and noting down the key points, the main points, the hints rather. Although it's called note taking, in fact it is hint taking. The, the interpreter takes the hints on paper so that he is ready once the speaker stops and the audience expects to know what is said in the target language, the interpreter is ready to speak from his mind and keep a link of the ideas, sequence of the ideas through the notes he or she might have taken. Whereas in the simultaneous interpreting at Tarjama al Fawri al Mutazamina, the speaker and the interpreter speak simultaneously at the same time. Functionally, this means they may not be at the same place, unlike the consecutive interpreting. In the consecutive interpreting, the speaker and the interpreter can be at the same place because they do not disturb each other once one speaks other listens 
whereas in the consecutive uh, simultaneous interpreting sorry the speaker goes on speaking and the interpreter simultaneously interprets none of them stops this is the mode in most of the conferences uh, meetings nowadays and it saves time it doesn't double the time unlike uh, the consecutive interpreting now what is uh, important here is the the interpreter needs to take notes in such a way that he focuses on chunks of information he focuses on the main ideas the themes so that he can convey the essence to the audience because it's not possible to remember the words and the structure of the original or the source speech so the interpreter focuses on the key ideas so that he can uh, convey the same to the audience now what is important for an interpreter is that unlike a translator a translator may do the translation in his office at his home in the hostel in the car wherever he may he may do it uh, during the work he may do it at night he may do it in on the holidays whereas an interpreter has to do it simultaneously at the same time when the at on the occasion now in any case uh, interpreting is also different from the skill and personality perspective wise also in other words an interpreter needs to be sociable before the he is called for the actual interpreting he needs to do some homework he needs to meet the organizers he needs to know about the topics he needs to know about the situation he needs to know about the audience he needs to know about the timings he needs to know about if there are any colleagues who will be co interpreting with him or he or she is alone doing the job he else also needs to coordinate with the organizers to see if there are any notes any presentations available uh, to him before he sets on the job because this will help him to understand the subject to prepare his mind with the suitable terminology and he so that he can do the job efficiently so this is as far as the uh, the work before interpreting is concerned during the interpreting in all the cases one needs to be focused 100% focused and uh, take notes as required by the situation and the notes generally are taken in the target language for example if somebody is the speaker is speaking in english the interpreter ought to take his or her notes in the target language that is arabic and vice versa if the speaker is speaking in arabic and the interpretation is required to be in english the notes ought to be in english although the name is, is such as note taking that means it's like notes the student like the students know take notes in the classrooms but practically it is uh, 
it must not be called note taking i i personally call it hint taking because the more the interpreter focuses on writing on the paper the 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 more he loses the focus with the speaker so it must be written quickly fastly efficiently with 99% focus on the speaker now while interpreting it's very important for the interpreter to know the audience if the interpreter is interpreting for a television program for example that means it's interpreted for the masses who include all kinds of people with all levels of knowledge and understanding all cultures whereas if he or she is talking to the intellectuals for example in a university it is different so what i was mentioning is that there is some some work which the interpreter has to do beforehand before going for the actual interpreting session if it is possible to coordinate with the concerned officials organizers to get as much information as as possible so that it helps him or her to prepare his mind prepare the terminology and know the audience of course now what uh, was the uh, what what is important is that a translator is uh, supposed to know the audience supposed to know the situation so that he can uh, sort of customize his interpreting accordingly it depends on the whether he is doing it for the television or the radio for a conference for school children for um, for the colleagues uh, for for a court so the situation uh, according to the situation the interpretation also will will be different of course so with the experience the interpreters know what they have to do how they have to do and uh, besides the note taking which i may call the hint taking the interpreter also has to know as i said the audience before besides knowing the audience here she uh, of course it involves knowing the culture so uh, an interpreter uh, is supposed to be an expert in not only in the language both the language source language and so target language but source culture and tar- target culture as well so now what happens between the cultures is that something may be very familiar in a certain culture and it may be strange in a different culture and the when the people of the same culture same language talk between themselves there are uh, numerous shortcuts because they understand from the situation they understand from the culture they understand from the background whereas uh, certain things may be strange to uh, to a person to a listener to the audience to the user of the interpretation uh, so interpreter uh, needs to be well aware that whether if he or she needs to do some bridging bridging of the ideas filling the gaps for example i was recently listening to a, a speech by a certain speaker he was talking in arabic he was talking about uh, oman's uh, geographical situation nature of oman uh and uh, oman's dealing interaction with different uh, cultures from the east and from the west uh on the eastern side with the iranians with indians and uh, historical indians pakistanis indians and on the eastern side uh, uh, with the africans with other arabs on the north. so oman had uh, oman has and had a geographical position where it needed to uh, trade interact with other cultures which was an advantage omanis learned from them and taught f- to the others who interacted with them they influenced them they were influenced so the speaker was saying in arabic uh, that yani al mawqa al geography li li oman امان التاريخي كونها بين الهند التاريخيه الهند وباكستان حاليا بين ايران والدول العربيه والقاره الافريقيه فكانت لهذا 
التعامل لهذا الاحتكاك فوائد إيجابيات كثيرة على الثقافة العمانية فإثراء وإثراء الثقافة العمانية في هذا السياق المتحدث قال كلمة جزء من آية قال فالتقى الماء على أمر قد قدر Of course, it is uh, very difficult for a translator to translate it as it is. It will not mean anything. It, it would, if we translate it literally, it would mean the, the water uh, combined, joined, as Allah had wished it. So, whereas it refers to when the, uh, the flood of Noah, when Noah had been calling his nation for a long time, but he had a, a positive response from a few among those who did not listen to him was his own son who said i will escape to the mountain when the flood comes if it happens as you claim i will run to the top of the mountain and nothing will happen to me so the what happens is uh, that uh, as re- reported as as mentioned in the holy quran and of course in the other uh, books also Uh, is uh, that the uh, the uh, there were heavy rains from the from top, and the water gushed out from springs from the bottom from the earth as well. So these two waters from the from the rains and from down gushing from the springs, they they joined together and it became a huge flood which drowned everything except the uh, Noah's ark. So in this context, it means the two waters combined today, and it was so as it was uh, planned by God. So now, how an interpreter will say this? So uh, interpreter, if it was translation, an interpreter can write a, a dis- descriptive note, explanatory note, uh, which may take a half a page to mention the story of Noah and his son, Noah's ark, especially. Uh, but in an interpretation there's hardly any time to mention this so the speaker the, the the interpreter may simply say it was the wish of the god that oman happened to be between these cultures and it was affected and affected in turn other cultures as well so this kind of bridging is very much required or in another situation the speaker speaks kama rawahu muslim Now, speaking uh, in English, one may say, as reported by Muslim. Now, in the audience, many of the people, many people may not understand what is Muslim. They may understand this is the name of a Muslim who follows the religion of Islam, like a Christian who follows Christianity, or a Hindu who follows Hinduism. But it is not so, whereas the Muslim is the scholar who compiled the, the sayings, and acts of Prophet Muhammad. The famous book after Al-Bukhari is the compilation of uh, Al-Muslim. Muslim. So he refers to that. So the, the, the interpreter here in this case may say, he may not say, he must not say as reported by Muslim. He must say as reported in the collection of sayings of the Prophet Muhammad compiled by Muslim. So that's it. Now, another aspect of interpreting from the classroom perspective. How uh, the students are trained, what are they trained for, and what are the expectations from them, and how do we assess their performance. Now, uh, regarding the training, we try it, we train them on the skill of listening, focusing, note-taking, cultural issues, bridging the gaps and uh, uh, things related to clarity of the sound, clarity of the ideas, audibility, um, body language, um, dramatizing the speaker's uh, speech. The speaker is uh, speaking in a in an ex- exciting way. The Preferably, the interpreter also needs to speak in, in an exciting manner. If the speaker is saying something in a sad mode, 
or mood the interpreter needs to keep the same in the interpretation also so as much as uh, uh, the speaker the uh, the interpreter can dramatize the the original speech it will help the audience to understand well Uh, now from the assessment point of view what we expect from the students and what we train them for is that they must comprehend the the subject what the speaker is speaking it must be comprehended otherwise and so that the speaker and the interpreter are on the same page they are speaking on the same side otherwise as we say in arabic al mutahaddith fi wadin wal mutarjim fi wadin akhar the speaker is in one valley and the the the, the interpreter is another in, in another valley so for this the hard work lots of general knowledge experience is very much required from the interpreter second point is the completeness an interpreter must do the complete interpreting complete interpreting does not mean he has to translate or interpret every word it means he has to interpret all the main ideas the whole theme of the speech nothing from the important points should be left out minor fillers may be left out it's all right now number 3 re expression with accuracy and precision now when the interpreter interprets re expression means interpreting in the target language of course it has to be done accurately it has to be done with precision it must mean the same thing what the inter- what the speaker means it must not mean something else so it has to have accuracy it has to have the precision number 4 clarity and audibility the interpreter is supposed to speak clearly not to munch the words and he or she has to be audible has to speak loud enough clear enough so that the ultimate purpose of reaching the audience is fulfilled number 5 matching intonation and body language of course as i said earlier uh, it's a kind of interpretation is uh, more or less like uh, acting in a film the actor is playing the role of a personality in a novel for example so to say so it must match the 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 the, the original uh, speaker and uh, number 6 a student must show the confidence while interpreting because without co- confidence uh, one cannot interpret and uh, and if this uh, and if the interpreter doesn't have the confidence definitely the audience will lose the confidence so this needs uh, a lot of hard work from the interpreter uh, in terms of keeping on updating his knowledge in terms of learning more in terms of learning more about the language learning more about the cultures as much as he can know something of everything so that will make him a, 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 a successful interpreter uh, thank you so much for your patience uh, god bless you and have a good time and stay safe